All right, you guys, so I've wanted to make this video here for a long time. The title of this video is the worst Harley Davidson I ever bought. So I bought this motorcycle here for my wife uh, about two years ago. So when I bought this motorcycle, we were trying to get her off her Honda. We wanted to get her on uh, Harley Davidson. So I took it upon myself to go out. I went to one of our local dealers. It's uh, J and J Cycles out in Maslin, Ohio. So I picked this bike up for thirty-five hundred dollars, which is a great deal, uh, amazing deal for the motorcycle if it was not the worst bike I ever bought in my life. So the only thing that I could think of is that this bike was used for one of the uh, riders training courses. So from the first day that we brought this bike home, we had issues. The thing was losing power like crazy. Now, don't get me wrong, when I test rode the bike, I knew it was lacking in power. They claim this thing is like 50 horsepower and it's putting out like 29.5 foot pounds of torque. So I figured this would be a great entry into Harley Davidson for her because she came from a Honda Nighthawk 450. So she doesn't like the super powerful bike. She's more into just cruising. I figured this would get her into Harley Davidson. I put an SNS uh, two into one exhaust on it. I put a stage one air intake on it. I put a Vance and Hines fuel pack three on the bike. Still couldn't get it to ride properly. So the main issue that we had with this bike was that as you would drive down the road, you would lose power. It seems like it would not shift in between second and third gear. So you would get some decent performance out of first gear. You would shift in the second, it kind of got stale. Shift in the third, it would get even worse. Then you would get in the fourth gear, you would be doing like 35 mile an hour get in the fourth gear and it would start giving you a little more power back. Uh, fifth gear would just be a cruising gear. So I've done multiple things to the bike at first. The fan would not kick on. This is a uh, liquid cooled motorcycle. They call this their uh, Revolution X engine. It is absolute horrible garbage. I would not recommend this bike to anyone if you are having the same issue. So I put the Vance and Hines Fuel Pack 3 on. I ran uh, the diagnostic on it. It was sending an O2 sensor code, which is all right. The O2 sensors are known to go bad on some of these bikes. So I switched out the O2 sensors, put in the brand new ones, got everything torqued down. Everything was great. The air codes went away. The bike still ran horribly. So. After that, I took apart the electrical going to the fan, ended up getting the fan to kick on, so now that was working properly. So thought everything was going to be good with this bike. The wife took it out a handful of times. The second year that we had it, it would stall out. Uh, she would have to shut the bike completely down, put it in a neutral, turn it back on. Kept having issues with it. Um, I couldn't figure out what they were. The reason why I say that this was probably a test motorcycle or one of those learning motorcycles that they use for the beginner's riders courses is every time I would try to ride this bike, it felt like it just would not shift. It wouldn't shift smoothly or properly. You would lose power in different gears. So when in the Harley was talking to them about it, the Technician there told me that it may need a new fuel pump. He said that some part that they designed in this fuel pump gets worn down. If the gas sits in the motorcycle for too long, it can eat away at this rubber housing in there and cause these kind of issues. He's seen it before. 
So I went through, I looked at everything, that was not the issue. The fuel pump was fine. It didn't have fuel sitting in it. Uh, we ran this bike regularly, so it couldn't have been that issue. Now, another issue I've been having with it is I got oil leaking out from under this piece of plastic that houses your uh, radiator. I'll find like puddles of oil. I'll show you guys later where it sits. Went through looking, there's no cracks in the cases. There's uh, no bad gaskets up here on the top of the engine, anywhere around here. I could feel for days, it is all bone dry, spotless. Uh, I still can't find out where this oil leak is coming from that way. So I decided I was gonna trade this bike in. I went out and bought my wife uh, Sportster 48. She loves the bike. She rides that bike every day now. We haven't had an issue with it. So long story short, we were gonna go trade this bike in at our local Harley. I just wanted to get close to my money back out of it. I paid, you know, $3,500 for it. I just wanna get rid of it. Get on the highway, I'm shifting up. I get to fourth gear. All of a sudden start losing power. Shift to fifth gear, nothing just losing power, bike will not run. Shift down the fourth again, nothing. Shift to third, nothing. Shift all the way down the first gear to get this bike to run. Pull it over on the side of the highway, I'm looking over it, go to get back on it, turn it on, put it in the first gear. We have a little bit of power, but I mean, when I tell you I could push this thing faster, I could push it faster than it was going at first gear. Went to shift up to second gear, absolutely nothing. Um, nothing else catching gear-wise. Transmission was completely gone. So I'm pretty sure the clutch was fried out. That's why I say that I think this came from one of those beginner riders classes because all it is is clutch, clutch, clutch all day long. This bike only has 2,500 miles on it and the clutch is smoked. So at this point, I was going to sell it. What I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to order a new clutch for it. Now, the clutches that are available for this bike, there's only one that I can find online and they want $500 for it. So that's a little bit steep when you're talking. I'm probably going to get three grand out of this bike. So it's just been sitting here collecting dust uh, for the last nine months. Now, eventually I am going to change the clutch out. I want to put a knobby tire on the front. I want to put a knobby rear tire on. I just want to start taking this thing on some kind of trails or something. If I even find out if it's roadworthy after doing the clutch, I still got to figure out where this residual oil is dripping down off the bike. And I don't know if I mentioned earlier in this video, a big issue that she had when she first got on this motorcycle was that she couldn't turn it. It seems like the neck bearings like stick at, I would say, 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock when you're going to turn, they'll just stick and you won't be able to turn the bike any further. So we've had nothing but issues with this bike. Now don't get me wrong, I thought the bike looked good. Uh, she looked good on it. She enjoyed riding it. She said it was comfortable, but it was not reliable. It's had issue after issue, and I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with the bike. I'm going to tear this down, open this up. Another issue that I had with the bike was your clutch is housed on the right-hand side. It's in this case in here on the right-hand side. Um, not sure if I really like that design at all, but that was the design that they went with. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to tear this thing apart. Uh, we might be making a dirt bike out of it. We might be going off-roading with it. So just wanted to fill you guys in as to what was going on with this bike and why this was the worst purchased Harley I've ever bought. Other than there not being any uh, research or any information online about these bikes, really, 
very minimal information out there right now because they only ran them for a short amount of years and now the street 500 is completely discontinued so I did great by picking her up a new bike we got her the new Sportster that thing runs amazing it is absolutely amazing so she loves that brand new Sportster and that thing is tuned for her she likes the handlebars on it now I don't really want to get rid of this bike unless I could get like three grand out of it but we're gonna to have to determine that going forward with the issues that we're having all right so we thought we figured out the turning on it so I definitely put a bunch of grease in the neck bearings and we were smoothing that out we were getting it to turn a little bit better and everything seemed to be going great and then all of a sudden when we got her her new bike so we picked her up this Sportster 48 she decided hey you know what let's just sell the old bike let's just get rid of that one um we're not riding it it's just sitting there so i agreed with her we went to go take it for a ride and that's when we ran into our issue with it so it's just weird that we weren't able to figure it out and we've done a lot here to try to figure it out now this right here is exactly where this bike sits and it is leaking some kind of fluid it's not a crazy drip there's a little wet spot there but it is actually coming from down here i've narrowed it down to where it's coming out of this bottom casing itself the bottom plastic that actually houses this radiator in the bottom right hand corner it's just a very small drip. I actually took that housing cover off several times, cleaned the whole thing out, looked at the engine, sprayed the engine down, trying to figure out where it's coming from, and we can't figure it out. I can't pinpoint it. I can't get anything figured out that way. So this Honda was the very first motorcycle that she ever rode. She was 16 years old. She got her motorcycle endorsement and she started riding this bike. She absolutely loved it. When I met her, she was in her 20s. She was still riding it. And I finally got her on a Harley, even though we've had nothing but issues with this bike. So there you guys have it. That is the worst Harley Davidson I have ever bought. I would not recommend picking these up. I've been seeing them right now online going for super cheap. There's different uh, dealers out there selling these things for five and six thousand dollars still, which I don't understand. Now, if they're not having the issues that this one is, that's great. But I've bought and sold a lot of Harley Davidsons and I have never had an issue like this. This is just a precautionary tale. Please stay away from these bikes unless uh, you get some kind of warranty from the dealer that you're buying it from. But all right, guys, there you have it. The worst Harley Davidson I have ever purchased and the backstory with it.